Greetings fellow Demon Slayers, this is Timon and Mari here today with another action Timon and video. So before getting into it, I just want to let you guys know we have opened up a Patreon page for the channel for anyone interested in supporting. The link will be in the description. And in advance, all donations will be greatly appreciated because it will help to further improve the channel slash keep it alive. So, now that that's out of the way, today's video subject matter. We are going to be talking about super rare weapons that are worth enchanting. With the advent of the enchanting system, a lot of people have either left the game or have a real... Really, like... I don't want to say negative because it's not really a negative outlook, but it's... It's not a good opinion of the game, I guess you could say, because a lot of people feel like the game has become way more pay to win because they feel like they're obligated to pull gotcha to enchant their weapons, which they are, but super rare weapons are way less costly than trying to enchant an ultra rare weapon. So today I'm going to look at some notable super rares that may be worth your time to enchant. I'm also going to be cross-referencing with Cygnus's... Um, spreadsheet or wiki page or whatever you want to call it I am going to link that in the description as well so we're basically going to go over the, his list and I'm going to give my opinions on what he suggests and suggest anything he may have missed so with that let's get right into it the easiest way to do this is to come to the ticket gotcha because I've broken down so many super rares I don't really have a big collection to show you guys anymore so we're going to come here all right so this is every super rare weapon. So the first weapon that Cygnus suggests, because we're just going to cross-reference. Alright, so he suggests a magnetic sword. So looking at the magnetic sword here, this guy. Alright, it says increases normal attack damage by 20%. The normal attack's final hit knocks back enemies. Okay. I like it because Asagi's normal attacks are already pretty beefy. They do have a lot of good hit feedback. Like, the enemies seem to actually go into sort of a real hit stun when Asagi's beating on them. So I can see awakening it if Asagi's your main. I do personally feel that are better options, but I, I get what his list is trying to do. It's, it's trying to factor in whoever you may be maining, like, because there's a weapon for each time and enlisted. So while it's not my first choice... Like, yeah, if I were in a Soggy main and I was, like, free to play and only had a magnetic sword, I could definitely see myself, like, investing in it because I don't think it's a bad weapon. It's definitely a good weapon and, and it definitely adds way more hit feedback to her already feedback-heavy normals. And since the Soggy's a normal-heavy character, you get a little bit of CC to go along with that. Well, you get a lot more CC, I guess to say, to go along with that Kojenka CC on top of the basic attack spam. Alright, the next weapon he suggests is Skeleton Blade. I do endorse any super rare weapon like this, because super rare weapons have the lucky ability of being able to give your, give your character a crap load of crit rate. So at base, Skeleton Blade is 14% crit rate, but if you happen to have it at S level 5, that would be an additional 28%. Of course, yeah, the damage and crit that it provides you, as far as attack and critical, are much lower than an ultra rare, but if you go ahead and awaken this, you'll have a nice little beat stick along with a nice amount of crit rate. So any super rare weapons like this, I would 100% endorse, and I agree with Cygnus' opinion on that. Okay, what else did he suggest? Let's see here. Alrighty? Alrighty. So, next he suggests the bloody line. So, like, things like Bloody Cross, and then we have, like, Bloody Chaser, and then, like, Sinketsu, it has a different name, but it would fall into this line as well. These weapons, I could see why he'd suggest these, especially with things like Tower and Bonus Stages being added to the game. Sustain has become much more valuable, and unfortunately, like, there are some characters who don't have Sustain, and actually, you know what, I think these weapons are only for the original three characters. But anyway, like, okay, so, Asagi, for example, she has sustain, but her sustainability isn't super great, because she, like, kind of has to jump into the air and come down, and it leaves her a bit vulnerable. So if you're hungry for sustain on an Asagi, you could definitely, like, 
go ahead and enchant this weapon. At max S level, I believe the HP restored is... I don't remember. I'd have to look at one of mine. I don't even... Yeah, I have some. Um, inventory. Because it normally doubles, but I don't think that's the case for these. Let's see. Where's one that's actually completed? Okay, so it, it does double. So it is only 2%, but it does apply to all of your skill damage. So it's not, you know, OP, OP. But at the same time, it's not bad either, especially if you're hungry for sustain on any of the characters you're playing. So I personally don't think it's a bad option if you're looking to keep yourself alive in the new content. Like, you gotta do what you gotta do. Would I rate it over other weapons, like crit weapons? No, but if you're looking for sustain, weapons within this family, like, that have this ability, the Sanguine Spiral, are definitely not bad. The next weapon he suggests is the Ina Bikari. Now, personally, uh, you know, after looking at it for a second, maybe I, uh, okay, I like it only because Renko is really basic attack heavy, so I could see that being something that would help her out if you don't have anything better. Uh, maybe it's because I'm so, like, geared to, like, consider ultra rares that it doesn't seem as good to me. But yeah, having that extra attack speed is good because it'll force Renko to finish more of her normal chains, which her normal chain is kind of a really slow animation and hard to get off without some sort of CC, like using Wind Slice or knocking stuff down with Meteor. But yeah, I could see this being good if you had nothing better and like Renko was your absolute main. This is definitely like a non-conditional weapon you can look into leveling because that additional attack speed will definitely help you, and since it stacks five times, you'll be looking at 10% extra speed at, at S level 1, and 20% extra speed at S level 5, if you have all five stacks. So overall, yeah, it's not a bad idea to invest in this. The next weapon he suggests, I do endorse, but he says it, and I also agree, this is a conditional choice. This will make your Renko hit demons absurdly hard, but it will only work on demons. That's the drawback to using Leyline. It's a demon killer. So it won't be useful in all content, but if you ever come across content where you're in need of additional damage to demons, having this Awoken, or Enchanted rather, isn't a bad idea. Have I been saying Awoken this whole time? Well, I mean Enchanted. So having this Enchanted isn't a bad idea. And since enchanting super rares isn't as expensive as ultra rares, it's way more realistic to do so. So moving on from Leyline, the next weapon he suggests is the Protoplasma weapon for Nui. And again, at S level 1 this is going to provide 14% crit rate, at S level 5 this provides 28% crit rate. Honestly, like, as you guys know, I've enchanted my Kirara, like, as far as I could go, like, nothing's maxed. But she has a pretty heavy enchantment investment. And when I use my Shiranui with this weapon at just S level 5. Without any enchantment investment. And with no Magatamas. Because sometimes I just use her to showcase her. Or to screw around with her. She pretty much clears content as fast as my Kirara. And yes that does include bonus stages. It, Shiranui right now is an amazing character. So really irregardless of what you put on her. She's going to do well. It's kind of to a point where her gear really doesn't matter. So with that being said, if you have like this super rare lying around and have the resources to enchant it, you're going to have a really powerful character just because she's simply amazing now. And giving her more crit rate, which she likes, is just it's never going to be a bad thing. And in, in enchanting this weapon, it's going to go from being a super rare that already deals great damage to pretty much coming in line with what an old ultra rare would have been. And having a nice critical stat to stat on top of that. So, I overall endorse this weapon. I overall endorse Nui as a character. She's really freaking good right now. The next weapon, if you're looking for something more conditional, would be the Vajra Scepter. And again, it pretty much does what Leyline will do, dealing an, an additional amount of damage to demons. So, if you enchant this, you're going to have yourself a nice demon killing beat stick, the same as Renko's Leyline. Next we have Magi MK2 for Emily, and of course we endorse crit weapons, and this is a nice crit weapon. And again, if you enchant it, it's going to bring it in line with what an ultra rare used to be, 
which isn't a bad thing. And the reason I'm saying what an ultra rare used to be is because S level 5 ultra rares were already good enough to clear, like tower and bonus. Like, you didn't really need a fully enchanted character, or an enchanted character at all, because people have cleared tower with ultra rares, and the ultra rares that they used in some cases weren't even S level 5, some were like S level 3. I've seen people get through with stuff at even an S level 2 or an S level 1. So with that being said, being able to bring super rares in line with what an ultra rare was means you'll hopefully have an item that can get you through this content without having to waste resources investing in an ultra rare. So yeah, overall enchanting is a good system regardless of what you have available to you. But moving on from that, let's look at the other weapons that he suggests. So let's see here. We have that. We have these. Okay. Back to the game. Okay, the next weapon he suggested was the Plasma Edge for Morisaki. And again, crit rate. Of course, this is a good choice. Simply because you'll have a nice little beat stick with a lot of crit rate. I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but this is just to give you suggestions for every character. What did this do while I'm here? Okay, so this falls into the family of, like, the Bloody Chaser weapons. This would also be a good choice for anyone who wants sustain, but Morisaki is kind of one of the queens of sustain with her Senpu. So I would hold off on enchanting this unless you're insanely desperate for something. And I would probably look into just going with her Plasma Edge for the crit rate. Because when her Simpu crits, it'll obviously hit harder, which would just provide you more sustain using her kit. You won't really need the bloody, the bloody series weapon or the Sanguine Spiral or whatever you want to call it. This one has a passive Emotin Executioner. But yeah, the healing weapons. Next, he did suggest Companion Hand for Sue. Again, this falls into the Conditional family, but having an additional 40% to 80% damage dealt to machines depending on S level isn't bad. In, in enchanting this, your Sue will pretty much just become a flat-out machine killer, which of course is not a bad thing. I like the little name, Turret Punch. Oh god, imagine she punched and just like bullets came off. That would be really cool. Now what does this do? Okay, so it's the same thing, except instead of, like, damage to machines, we have damage to demons for Mighty Knuckle. So, yeah, you can make your Sue pretty versatile. Like, she could become a demon or a machine killer if you invest in enchanting her, su her super rares. So, overall, yeah, Sue has a nice little loadout for super rares because these were the super rares, like, most people were using back in the day, like, increased damage to a certain enemy type. Because usually events feature enemies of one type, and this would just allow you to counter them. And since we do have a weapon swapping system, if you were to say enchant both of these to like plus 5 and plus 10, speaking about her mighty knuckle and her companion hand, you could pretty much bring Sue into any machine based or demon content, or any content with a mix of the two, and just swap weapons as needed, and she'll become a nice killer with nice damage output. So overall, yeah, I don't mind these, but be advised they are still conditional choices because she would still not be able to kill humans as efficiently as demons are machines. Next we have the Experimental Photon Blade for Koronai. Uh, now, this is good for Koronais who like to run skill damage builds. At S level 5, this would provide you with a 40% skill damage increase, which isn't that bad. I do wish it gave critical rate like most of the other experimental weapons, but Koronai's skills do hit rather hard, and if you are wanting for extra damage output and don't have an ultra rare, or don't have the resources to enchant an ultra rare, this isn't a bad, a bad choice for a skill-based build. Next we do look at the Split, the split Moon Dorje. Yeah, that's how I'm going to say it, Dorje. So... While Cygnus suggests this, I don't, I don't necessarily like it for one reason. It requires you to defeat an enemy. It is a good, like, overall a good skill, because you kill an enemy, you get a damage increase, and it stacks up to 5 times. At S level 1, that would max at 15%. At S level 5, that would max at 30%, because this 3% should double to 6%. So overall, it's not bad. The issue is, when you're bossing instead of mobbing, Usually there aren't any real, like, mobs to kill with the boss, 
or like you run out of mobs to kill because once you kill all the bo mobs that spawn with a boss in action time and in I don't recall any of them respawning I think they're just dead and then you can focus on the boss so this weapon pretty much loses its power the more the less enemies there are on the screen because you won't have enemies to kill to proc your passive now what I'm not seeing here is a timer it just says increases damage dealt stacks up to five times so in the case that this ability is just permanent for the enemies you killed yeah then I could suggest it but as we know with this game they don't always give the full picture or all the information for all I know this like only lasts for like 10 20 seconds and then the stacks fall off but it doesn't have any stipulation like getting hit loses stacks or any stipulation like they have a timer so assuming it's infinite and you don't die, yeah, it's just an all-around damage increase. But I'm not going to assume that. I really don't know because I don't have Core and I to test it myself. Because it'd be really obvious to see if you're doing 15 to 30 percent damage more. Uh, any Core and I mains, yeah, definitely let me know. But if this is a permanent effect, so you just go into the map, kill five enemies, and then she just has this damage increase. Then yeah, I would definitely suggest enchanting this because it's just a huge ass damage increase. But that would require some testing or further info. Like I said, I don't have Cordai, so I don't really want to give a yay or nay and speak on it. But I'm sure someone watching the video will probably correct me. Next we have Companion Claw. Now, these super rare weapons I absolutely love. Like, Obero was the first character to feature a weapon like this. And I 100% have suggested to people, like, yeah, just use her super rare. It gives, like, 80% critical damage at S level 5. It doesn't seem that great, but 80% critical damage is a, is a buttload of critical damage. And if you have any, like, means of specking your character into crit rate, you're going to see some really big hits, even though it's just a super rare weapon. So enchanting things like this, I 100% say, yeah, go for it, especially if you're an Obero main, because it's going to make her hit like a runaway train. And if you don't have something like a rebellious weapon, then this is literally, like, your best choice. Like, honestly, in some cases, I even feel like these critical damage weapons surpass rebellious weapons if you're able to get your crit rate from other means. Moving on from that, what did this do? Okay, this is a human killer. Do I believe Cygnus suggests this as well as a conditional item. Let me just alt-tab. Yes, he does. So, yeah, killing, for killing humans, you do have it as something conditional that you can go ahead and enchant. But, with her having something like an 80% critical damage weapon at S level 5 for Companion Claw, I just don't see the value in even looking at her Hand of Papias. Or, yeah, Papias, because I, I think Companion Claw is an amazing weapon. Okay, scrolling down. Or not scrolling down, but next item, we have SWAT Arms. And again, uh, increased speed by 2% during normal attacks, stacks up to 5 times. This would be good for an Asuka main who's wanting a decent beat stick, and maybe they don't have a PvP weapon, or the means to enchant a PvP weapon or gacha weapon, and they have this at S level 5. Making Asuka attack faster is always a good thing, because Asuka does have really strong normals, and access to an infinite chain with her normals. So, overall, this is not a bad choice, and bringing it in line with an Ultra Rare would just mean she'll kill faster while uh, attacking. She'll kill faster due to damage, while also attacking faster due to the Assault System passive. What does this do? Okay, so this would be something you could use, again, as a conditional choice. I do believe Cygnus suggests this as well. Increased damage dealt to machine types by 40%. Hey, why is she racist and, like, killing her own friends? She's a machine. She can't hurt other machines. But either way, yeah, 80% damage to machines at S level 5 is good. Even 40% at S level 1 is good. It is conditional, but if you ever need to murder machines and you've invested in this weapon, your Asuka will take care of you. So, we're down to the last few. Next, we do have the Hollow Spear for Kirara, and again... I do endorse crit rate. In Kirara's case, it's a little funky because she does have a really low critical stat. Because her pa passively, like at base, without any skins or anything, Kirara's stats seem to veer towards her but being more tanky. But either way, if this is your option, definitely use it. 
28% critical rate is, of course, nothing to scoff at. Just be advised, she will crit less than other characters. Like, even my Enchanted Kirara still crits less than some of my other characters. Like, even my Yukikaze that's not Awoken. Or, yeah, not Awoken, or what is it? Yeah, Awoken. Yeah, the thing that gets you past 75 cap. So my Yuki that's not Awoken are not Enchanted still crits more than my Kirara. Because Kirara's critical rate is low, even though my Kirara's twanked out with gear. So keep in mind, she will crit less despite having the 14 to 28 percent critical rate, but it's still a good weapon overall. It will be a nice beast stick that's in line with an ultra rare once, it encha once it's enchanted. So it's not a bad choice if you're looking for an option for her. Next, we do have Yasha Spear. This I can endorse because. It has nothing to do with her critical rate, it's just basic attack damage. Now, Kirara does have the blessing of having a Ghetto Kojenka. So this will, of course, make her more basic attack heavy. But she does have moves that also increase her speed. So if you were to go into specking her, say, as an attack speed character, and relying on Frigid Zone as your main source of, like, DPS, all you have to do is simply, like, run in circles, avoid getting hit until Frigid Zone is off cooldown, proc frigid zone and you'll get a nice defense debuff on all enemies on screen as well as an extreme slow as if you kojanka them and then having this enchanted and at s level 5 would it provide you nice attack and crit overall on top of making those basic attacks do effectively 40 percent more so yeah this isn't a bad idea like to run on her i would actually suggest this over the critical rate weapon in her case because her critical rate is really bad, and this would just give you guaranteed damage overall. But either way, either one is a good choice. I think Kirara overall was blessed with really good super rare weapons. Next, we're going to look at Ingrid. And if you guys know, Arc Tack and I have been saying since Ingrid has come out that we consider this her best in slot weapon. Even in Oberoke's case, it's the same deal. Like, I, I just feel like these weapons are so good. 80% critical damage at S level 5 is just... It's too hard to ignore how much extra damage that actually is. And like I said, if you have a means of getting crit rate onto the character, this weapon will become amazing. On top of that, enchanting it will, of course, raise the attack and crit rate, making the crits more consistent, and making the damage much higher. So yeah, for Obro and Ingrid, like, these are great weapons. I wish more characters had this weapon family that allows them to just get that critical damage increase. It's insanely good. And the last weapon we'll look at is Yashigiri. This is a little bit conditional. I don't even think Cygnus mentions this. Let me just double check. Yeah, nope, just a blue lightsaber. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty much super rares that we currently have in the game that are worth enchanting. I know it was pretty long-winded, but I wanted to be thorough and go into situations for every character. Now, like, if something you're using here, you know, isn't mentioned, mention it in the comments, but I think we pretty much covered the bases of, like, the all-around good ones and what conditional ones could be useful under, you know, specific circumstances. And again, like, this is for people who... Are, are relying on super rares, they may not have their ultra rare at S level 5, or, you know, they may want to get into enchanting, but they don't have the means to enchant an ultra rare weapon, because, as you guys know, that's insanely expensive, and it gets really punishing towards the end, so you're really throwing away valuable mats. Whereas, enchanting super rares is much easier, because if you pull gotcha, or do like a tin pull, you're almost definitely guaranteed to get a, some sort of super rare, and then you just need to hope that it's within the same color family. So it's much cheaper on your account. You won't be tossing ultra rares away to try to feed other ultra rares. You'll just be worried about your super rares, and I think you'll easily be able to invest in, you know, a character or two if you're a long-time player. So overall, like, yeah, I just wanted to say that enchanting... It's not a well-liked system. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, like... It definitely hurt the game, I think, more than helped it, because it's caused a lot of players to, like, one, just flat out quit. Like, I know Ark just flat out uninstalled the game in the wake of that update. And it, it, it's just overall, like, the community is like, what the hell, because the game before Enchanting was introduced was something where you could kind of pull gotcha at your leisure and not really care. But now with it being here, people are feeling left behind if they can't do it, and they're feeling 
the push to full gotcha to get enchanting materials to throw away to maybe feed their main weapon or you know are their main supporter because you can also enchant supporters but i do hope this helps to like give the system a little bit of a positive light because it does still help lower spenders or free to plays relying on super rares because you can still enchant those items at a lower cost so with that i will end the video and i want to say thanks to cygnus for making that spreadsheet i will put the link in the description as i said earlier for that if anyone's interested in checking out the sheet or having it for a reference without having to constantly reference the video you can do that and he also does have some interesting character builds as well as like a full supporter listing and he does update the spreadsheet regularly so i think it's overall a good resource i even look at it from time to time if i'm not sure about something it's a nice easy place to go and say oh okay this is what that does or hey okay this 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 or that or whatever this is how you build this character you know whatever situation like it's usually useful and on top of that the wikis have been really like meh as far as information so I do think his spreadsheet is one of the best places to look in regards to information on the game. So with all that being said, that's going to end the video. Thanks for watching. And um, yeah, you guys have a great rest of your day. Good luck in all facets of the game. You boys and gals take care. And I'll catch you tomorrow with another video. Bye-bye.